Hi everybody, thanks so much for being here. Well, my summer is officially over, somehow. It flew by and I'm back to teaching. I just started this past week. But before I get totally wrapped up in that again, I wanted to share one more video with you. Now, some of you know that I try to paint as much as I can during the summers because obviously during the school year, I don't have much time to do that. This past summer, I only had about a month in which to do that. The month of July was mostly taken up with travel and I won't complain about that. I went to Big Bend National Park, obviously one of my favorite places, and I had a chance to visit Israel, which was amazing. But before I left, I was able to do a couple paintings, and I filmed one from start to finish as a time lapse. Finally, some of you had been asking to see a time lapse for quite a while. Now, it wasn't this painting here. This one is my most recent painting. It's called Trilingua Thunder. And by the way, it is still available. In case you're interested, please let me know. But the one before this was quite a bit larger, and it was called Mountain Mama. It showed another Big Ben scene, and it was the one that I had a chance to film as a time lapse. So I'm going to show that to you. I'll talk over it from time to time in order to share some of the steps that I took to make it happen. But I hope you enjoy, and let's get to it. The challenge for me when I paint Big Ben is having to decide between up-close wildlife pieces or vast landscapes on a grand scale. The idea for this painting had been in my mind a long time before I got to the canvas. I knew it would feature Casa Grande, an imposing peak in the heart of Big Ben, but I also wanted a dynamic sky and, if possible, I planned to feature an animal I had never painted before, a black bear. With so many goals to achieve, I knew that painting a miniature would almost be a necessity if I was going to get this right. Yes, it does require extra time, but I find that whenever I make that investment in the beginning, the final painting will almost always benefit as a result. Here, I have pre-marked my canvas with lines representing the golden ratio or 1 is to 1.618. I do this before sketching in the scene to help create an effective composition. You can see that sometimes I have to draw several different versions before finding one that works. In the past, I would tone my canvases with a thin mixture like this before sketching any details. This time, I decided to try a technique used by some landscape artists that I follow. You paint your canvas with diluted oxide red, and while the surface is still wet, you wipe out the highlights with paper towels. To be honest, while I am glad I tried this, I don't know that I will use it in the future. I found that my mixture dried too fast for me to get all the highlights, and additionally, the paper towels also removed a lot of the pencil work when I scrubbed the surface. Now, in case you're wondering why artists tone a canvas at all, there are actually several reasons. One of the biggest for me is that my values, or my lights and my darks, will be thrown off unless I reduce the glare from the bright white of a new canvas. All that white light would influence my eyes when I paint in the sky. In turn, the sky color and value influences the rest of the landscape, so it's very important to get it right. You may notice how I am working in the sky in sections of color. The way I like to paint is to identify an area I want to complete and attempt to pre-mix all the colors that I will need. Here I will paint in blocks of color and then blend the edges to create a smooth gradient. I continue to push and pull the colors back and forth until the values are where they need to be. In the same way, I have mixed these five colors for my clouds. Remember that even against a bright blue sky, clouds will have a lot of color variety. 
I will even allow small amounts of the oxide red from underneath to show through. Casa Grande makes up the middle ground in this scene. I let the colors get slightly darker here, but I make sure to keep them in the cool range of blues and purples. I also try to maintain a small range of value. In other words, a smaller difference between shadow and highlight. Both of these tools help create the illusion of distance and depth in a painting. Some artists also choose to remove detail from distant objects, and while I certainly use this method as well, for this scene I decided to leave in a lot of the rocky texture in the mountainside. Now as I work further down, the landscape slopes closer to the viewer, so I allow the highlights to get a bit brighter. I'm still keeping the contrast low, and I won't let the colors get too saturated yet. You saw how I started with the shadows first and the brighter colors second. Painting is all about layering, and after adding in small details and highlights, I am ending with a layer of faded green to show the distant vegetation. Now I'm finally on the foreground, and you can immediately see how much darker I am making the values. This first layer will establish the bottom of the value range, and the next layers will bring out the middle and top of the range. Most of this layer will end up being hidden but it's important for creating a foundation and texture before moving on. Now I can really start bringing out the bright values and saturated colors. Generally speaking, the brightest brights, the darkest darks, and the strongest colors will be the ones closest to the viewer. I'm getting progressively brighter with my colors and more defined in detail, especially towards the center of the image. This is where I want the viewer's eye to go. Another thing I try to do is to use more and more paint for these important areas. I build up three-dimensional texture that will catch the light 
and make the foreground appear even closer than if I kept it flat. I saved the mother bear and her cubs for last. I had spent a lot of time researching their anatomy and how they move, and I hope I did justice to one of Big Ben's most amazing animals. This painting took me on a journey back to the Chisos Mountains, but also to some artistic places and techniques that I had never tried before. It was a real joy getting to tackle this challenging scene, and I learned a great deal from it. I guarantee I will be looking to Big Bend in the near future as I plan my next paintings.